there's a war going on outside no man is safe from you could run but you can't hide forever i came across an article i wanted to delve into by angela broner helm entitled black women now the most educated group in u.s and uh, it has some type of antiquated picture uh, seemingly of um, you know an old school hbcu graduation uh, celebration wide smiles and everything like that um, you go this was up um, this article was published on uh, June 2016 uh, on a website uh, called The Root, and I'll be including the uh, link in the description box. Uh, based on the National Center for Education Statistics between 2009 and 2010, uh, black women earned a higher proportion of degrees awarded to total black students. Uh, and this is one of the the uh, statistics that it uses to back the claim that black women are the most educated group in the U.S. Uh, in addition, they use statistics uh, about uh, enrollment uh, percentages, uh, saying that by both race and gender, a higher percentage of black women are enrolled in college than any other group, um, topping the various groups. However, in an article entitled Race Gap Narrows in College Enrollment but Not in Graduation, on the website 538. Uh, I'm just gonna jump around a little bit uh, to address, address the problem of uh, the, the previous article um, using enrollment statistics as a, as a measurement or metric for educated. Uh, simply being enrolled in college tells us nothing about the proficiency of the individual. Uh, furthermore, if the enrollment percentages are calculated in the same spirit as the degrees earned percentages, then it is comparing the number of black women enrolled to total black students enrolled. Essentially, they are using the fact that there are more black women attending college than black men as a statistic to make the claim that they are more educated. I didn't delve too deeply in finding the actual enrollment numbers and statistics, but any reasonable individual knows that getting into college is not the gold standard of determining how educated a person is. Um, hell, they could be going to a party school uh, and, or a party college. Um, so as you see here, the, the uh, recent high school graduates attending two or four year colleges, uh, blacks have closed the college uh, enrollment gap. However, uh, while they've increased their attendance at two year colleges, uh, part time uh, college and uh, remedial classes, uh, blacks were less likely than whites to graduate within six years. And, um, you know, uh, sometimes it depends on the type of schooling as well. I mean, to your colleges, remedial classes, and part-time education at times are looked at as subpar in the sense of traditional education, uh, like the four-year schooling. But that's not always the case. Um, but in the category, the only category where blacks fell behind whites was graduating in six years. Uh, now the statistics do jump around in time, but we're pretty much talking about within the last um, 10 to 15 years. Where I did spend my time, however, was getting data on the bachelor's degrees that were actually conferred or earned uh, by race and sex. And here's um, a table of the data I collected, same source, uh, newer data, 2014 to 2015. And as you can see, black females almost double the number of black males earning bachelor's degrees uh, in this time period. Uh, with respect to the total number of degrees earned by black student, black females definitely dominate. And a conferred bachelor's degree is a legitimate claim to education or being educated than simply just being enrolled. So I definitely can vouch uh, for that statistic here. Um, but the 64% figure here that you see in the percent female of a given race uh, has dropped since uh, the article. Since the Root article quoted the 66% um, figure uh, from 2009 to 2010. Now, since the article was written in 2016, I wonder why they didn't use the figures that I was able to obtain that showed between 2014 and 2015 that black women were 64% of uh, bachelor's degrees. Um, now, you know, that's pretty much in the same ballpark, but I'm just trying to figure out why they didn't use 
the newer statistic. Maybe the data wasn't released at the time of the article. So if we pay attention to this table, we see black females being a larger percent with respect to their own race. And conversely, black males make up the smallest percent. In addition to the total number of blacks who earn college degrees um, is the fourth largest group. Uh, whites and Hispanics are larger groups and thus using an own group comparison to compare across groups is pretty much intellectually dishonest. You can't compare within your own group to show uh, a comparison across groups, especially if the, um, the basis or the total numbers are different between groups. Uh, the blacks and the Hispanics are closest to the nearest 100,000, uh, but still, it's, it's still intellectually dishonest. Using the exact same data, I constructed a pie chart to show the comparison across total degrees conferred across all races. Blacks make up 10% of conferees, less than Hispanics and whites. So if the number of bachelor's degrees earned is the measurement for how educated a person is, then black females are not the most educated. Whites are. More specifically, white females. Now to the credit of black females, they tie it with the Hispanic females for the number two slot. At the chagrin of black males, who fell below Hispanics by 1% of the total, or about 30,000 males. So now that we've addressed the most educated because I got mo degrees question, let's take another let's take another look at a question or a concept that the article begs. And this, this particular topic uh, has to deal with uh, unequal pay and uh, pay equity. Now, this section of the article does not explicitly state that the problem of equal pay lies in discrimination. However, the tone of the article hints at possibly leaning in that direction. Now, before I address this, I want to make it clear that racism and sexism does still exist. However, uh, when we start looking at the data, you start to see other, uh, you start to see what I would consider drivers of, uh, of pay, quote unquote, inequity. I would just say more or less a pay divergence. Based on the data that I got from the NCES, the National Center of Education Statistics, 2014 2015 i created this graph and extrapolated the top seven majors of bachelor's plus meaning that it's bachelor's master's doctorate to give an overall view of the total number of higher education or you know to be educated um and the number of black women uh, getting these degrees the largest number of degrees about thirty-eight thousand, were earned in business and that's pretty that's a pretty good major uh second uh was about in about twenty nine thousand. Uh, was uh, health professions, which is another good choice since we have aging boomers. Uh, tying for about, uh, well, well, not tying, but say about 13,000 is a field of education. And then tying for about 12,000 is psychology, social sciences, and history, and public administration and social services. And finally, we have social sciences. Now, I put that by itself because I included psychology, but I took out economics and I, and I, if you see my data, you'll see how I did it, but I basically broke out because economics can be considered a STEM uh, type of field because economics in its essence is applied math and it's analytical. So it, it deserves to be broken out of, of merely being uh, social sciences. Now what I did was I took it a step further. <coughs> Excuse me. Took the top seven um, uh, NCES um, majors and categories and I went to the BLS and I looked up the uh, types of occupations that would link up with these types of degrees and I did that and I and BLS has data and I'll have a link so you can go check it out uh, that gives the different categories of uh, career occupations and the employment levels and so what you see down that highlighted is the total num the total uh, number of employed people in the nation under these different categories. But what I did was I used the employment level, the total employment level, to weight the mean annual wage in each of these categories. So I could sum them up and and group them together and get a an overall uh, mean annual wage 
for all of these occupations. So essentially what I'm saying is that if I could create one job for all of the top seven degrees earned by black women, it would pay about $69,000. Okay, I did the same thing for the top seven bachelors plus, but I did it for STEM fields. And the reason why I picked the top seven was because there were actually seven STEM categories. So I just went and took, um, so this is actually in reverse. I went and took uh, the top seven because there were seven STEM fields in, in CES. And the STEM fields were uh, biological and biomedical sciences, uh, information sciences and computers and engineering, engineering technologies and related um, items, mathematics and stats, uh, physical sciences and economics. And economics is a category I created to break out uh, simply because, like I said before, uh, I wanted to break it out. And here, uh, I'm just going to address the, the negative value in economics. And the reason why the value is negative is because so many black women take psychology that it, it eclipses the whole social sciences category, thus making it negative. And also maybe because black women hate economics. I'm just kidding. I don't know. Maybe they do. I don't know. Hey, there's a sale on aisle five. I mean, hey, if you go buy more, that's economics, right? But uh, anyways, <laughs> um, our own man, Barry Obaminator, um, was the one who touted STEM, science, engineering, technology, and math fields uh, for careers, as careers of the future. And black women voted like hell for him. Thus, they should probably heed his words, right? Uh, the second thing I did, uh, so here we go. Um, excuse me. Uh, and I'm not going to edit this. I'm just going to run straight into this. Um, so I determined the numbers. And so now we have, look, about 6,000 degrees in uh, uh, 6,000 degrees between uh, tied for the top number of um, comp, comp psi and uh, biological and biomedical psi. Uh, and then we just drop to about 4,000 for engineering. And then uh, to the... Uh, to the nearest thousand, we, we are tied for the last three, uh, for the second to last three, engineering and related uh, mathematics and statistics and physical sciences. And then finally, that economics, that poor little uh, negative figure, which is just a uh, uh, mathematical adjustment. Again, mirroring the same thing that I did about two slides ago or a slide ago. Um, I took the STEM categories and I took the BLS data to come up with the wages and created a job uh, based on the type of wage that would be earned if you could combine all those STEM fields and you get about $87,000. This tops the top seven most popular black female majors by $18,000 a year. So our, right off the back, we already have a divergence in pay because of, of educational choice and degree choice. So I can't say that this is caused by racism. I don't think racism causes you to choose a certain major. I think that you choose to study what you're interested in. And if you're, interested, if you're not interested in STEM, and if one, a person doesn't have aptitude to do STEM, there's nothing wrong with that, but I don't believe that that's racist. Moving on. Flopping back to the NCS data, uh, we have uh, a paper, a working paper that was written called The Condition of Education uh, using NCS data. And they agree with me. They agree with me. And here's what they say. Essentially, they are giving you the uh, median annual earnings um, of 25 to 29 year old bachelor's degree recipients. And this was in 2015. This is when they got their degrees. This is alongside the study, the, uh, the analysis that I was doing. And it shows you that for all fields of study, the average that they were in, now this is median. So it differs from the mean. Uh, you can look up and get into some math in there. I, I, don't, have, I don't have time. Um, but the average for all fields of study was about $45,000, uh, the, the median. But look at these STEM fields. Wow, 71, 66, 62, higher, way above the average. Um, uh, you have, and we, but we look at that. There's nursing is poking right out there. And nursing is pretty good. It's in high demand. And so there's nothing wrong with choosing uh, the nursing field. So that is one field that they did, did choose. But 
um, ultimately these top stem fields is what's paying. Again, moving down the graph, you can see some of the different, um, the different fields and things like that. Um, as we start to go below the average, we first dip below the average for all fields at business management and administration, uh, business and other medical administration, and then um, biology, linguistics, uh, these, these majors, um, these fields start to pay below the median. Now, like I said before, we got a little bit, you know, there's going to be a couple of fields that are going to be below and we're going to have a couple poke out simply because the math of measuring the median and the, and the, uh, the, the mean, which is the average, is different. But still, we're right on point with the, what we're, with the overall um, nature of what we're talking about. And as you come down to these lower earning fields, you start to see more of the humanities, the education, the sociologies, and the social work, and elementary education, fine arts, and stuff like that. And then it shows you, it makes a point, STEM fields, all the way by about $56,000, uh, above the um, average, the median for all um, different categories. So that tells you that that is where uh, they need to spend more time and get more degrees in order to close that pay gap. Now switching gears, uh, here's a chart that represents us from the same source, uh, uh, representing the unemployment rates of the same 25 to 20 year, nine year old bachelor's degree recipients by our selective fields. It's almost an inverse representation of the three uh, employment and average income graphs shown previously. Now here we see the highest unemployment rates are liberal arts and humanities, which almost double the average unemployment rate. Although the highest unemployment rates here are popular with categories that are non-science and more humanities related, you can't help but notice that computer information systems unemployment rates uh, ties for second highest along with the history of unemployment rate at 4.8%. So, uh, you know, there is a little a bit of, um, you know, outliers poking around. As we go further down the tree and uh, more concrete uh, science and math based degrees yield lower unemployment rates. So we might have had that little, that little poke out of computer science and information systems. But generally, these, um, so, uh, these STEM fields are getting the unemployment rates again lower and lower as we go more into these fields. Uh, and look at there down at the bottom, some good old accounting. Uh, and general business, good about 2.3% uh, and 3.3% um, unemployment rate, or excuse me, accounting at 2.3% and uh, uh, bu uh, the business at 3.3% uh, um, respectively. Uh, before we, you know, of course we knew that the STEM fields uh, at, um, they have here at 3.5% unemployment rate, definitely lower than the average from all um, fields, but let's, but among these fields, you might see uh, a little exclamation point um, behind some of them. Uh, here we have the social work and human services category and the, uh, the elementary education category. So these are the poking out ones. See, so like, you know, remember how STEM, um, in that computer sciences uh, poked out in the higher unemployment rates? Well, we have in the lower unemployment rates a poke out uh, of some humanities. And we have the social work and human services and elementary education at 2.9% and 0.8% uh, unemployment, but they have these little, uh, this little exclamation point by it. And the notes that NCES gives is that to be cautious about these, uh, these statistics. No, it's not because no one wants to teach your badass, not even those kids, but maybe, but anyways, but it means that um, the coefficient of variation for those two statistics is between 30 and 50 percent. So what does that mean? The coefficient of variation is the ratio of the standard deviation to the mean. The standard deviation is a measurement of dispersion of how widely the variables uh, uh, swing uh, from one to another. And the mean is basically trying to find a central tendency. So there's a couple of things that can make this higher. The first thing that can make it higher is if there's not enough respondents to the sample. If there's not enough respondents to the sample, then each person, like let's say for example, like these people that were asked, let's say a thousand people were asked and they said, yeah, we took computer science. And then let's say they asked 20 people and they said, yeah, we're, uh, we, they were 20 people responded with uh, elementary education. And then these 20 people experience way different outcomes as far as unemployment. That is gonna cause the dispersion or the standard deviation to be high. 
So that is why you're going to get um, this uh, dispersion. And that's why you should be cautious with those figures. So those those little um, those lower unemployment rate humanities, those are just what basically what it's saying is that those are just kind of like, you know, outliers. Uh, again, in the context of the career discussion, uh, we we're talking about those. Um, uh, like I was talking about the coefficient of variation, I just wanted to mention that the U.S. National Center for Health Statistics usually does not report uh, an estimated uh, mean if its relative standard error exceeds 30%. Now, the standard error is uh, an analog for the coefficient of variation, which is basically the standard error divided by the mean. But the standard error depends upon the standard deviation. So therefore, um, because the the coefficient of variation is between 30 and 50 percent. Those are not reliable statistics. So just to rehash, um, the claim that black women are more educated uh, because of the percent of degrees they get relative to the number of degrees given to all blacks uh, doesn't really it doesn't really hold any water because it's an own group comparison and um, the only thing it does is point out that black women um, earn uh, degrees at a higher rate than black men in higher education. Um, the number of black women enrolled in a college have no bearing on being educated because simply attending college does not guarantee graduation. And so using an enrollment as a statistic doesn't hold any water. Sorry. But with that being said, black graduation rates are lower than whites even though their enrollment has caught up and the quality of the education uh, is higher with whites because they're graduating from these uh, graduates in six years. And we're not talking about um, remedial or um, uh, two year colleges. Uh, and while black women do out earn um, degrees compared to black uh, men, they're the third lowest in total degree conferees of all races coming in ties with Hispanics at 7% of the total. White women are the most educated by this measure, comprising 36% of all degree conferees, regardless of race or sex. So when we look across all uh, groups, race and sex, white women come out on top, uh, comprising 36% um, degree earners. And even though black women out earn degrees, the fields of study that they choose put them in a position to earn less than if they chose a STEM field. So while their enrollment and even frequency of degree, degree conferrals on the rise, they make less than their relative enrollment because of degree choices. So this has nothing to do with racism or sexism. But regardless, the 69,000, their forecasted average income based on these degree choices is nothing to cough at because it's higher than the average national median income. I think the average median income is about uh, nationally is about 50,000 or 55,000. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but 69,000 is about 15 to 20% higher. So while they might say that they don't have equal pay, they're making more money than the average or the, the, the median wage earner in this country. The take home uh, black women are definitely, um, with respect to uh, black uh, people, the most schooled, but they're not the most educated group in the US. The struggle, the struggle, the struggle, the struggle, the struggle.